reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. Verum Domini. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, and speak the truth in Christ, I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. 
their loom domini. Dominus vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Mateum. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. It was evening. He was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Verbum Domini. What is the ultimate value of our lives? There's an old expression, don't place all your eggs into one basket. Basically, what this means is to make everything in your life dependent on one thing, to place all your resources 
and effort into one place, into one account, or even one person. Another interpretation can be to risk losing everything by putting all your efforts for all of your money, for all of your stocks into one plan or one course of action. And perhaps this might be a mentality that infects and gets into our understanding in our relationship with the Lord. This kind of mentality can infect our relationship with the Lord. Sometimes it's easy to think, if I give my entire life to God, like Jesus asks us to do, then somehow I'm going to be missing out on something. That if I give my freedom to God, everything, then somehow I'm going to be missing out. In other words, making a choice for God. How important that is. We fall into the placing all of our eggs into one basket mentality, in other words. If the plan fails, then all of my eggs are broken. And we have nothing left to show for it but a bunch of slimy eggs on the ground, broken shells. And this is far from the case in our relationship with Jesus Christ. First of all, we are in a sense frail, somewhat broken, but not totally corrupt. If we think for a minute that we are perfect, we are in for a rude awakening. In our relationship with the Lord Jesus, we can put all of our eggs into one basket. We can put everything and we can count on him for everything. We can put everything into that one boat that he is in. And we can have confidence that he will carry them, carry those broken eggs, not maybe broken eggs. Sure, some of our eggs may be cracked and leaking all over the floor, you might think, of yourself. But Jesus can bring about good even in weakness. He is the only one who can restore what has been cracked or broken. Look at every single miracle account of our Lord in the Gospels and what he does with lepers, the most despised of the world. Look at what he does with a man with a withered hand, a lifeless hand. He can bring life and blood and power back into a hand that was once gone. And he can do that for you and for me. He can bring about a beautiful masterpiece out of brokenness and weakness if only we would but allow him. If only we would give him permission to do so. The Lord said to St. Paul after he complained, remember three times of taking away a particular weakness or struggle, the Lord said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And how hard it is for us to recognize and to be okay with our weaknesses. Sometimes it is so difficult to even just to ask for help. 
that I need help. This is especially difficult for men <laughs> that we need help with something. I need help with this project. I can't quite figure it out. Especially in terms of our salvation, we need help. We can't save ourselves. Elijah is an example of having complete confidence in the Lord. One of the keys for understanding Elijah is understanding his name, what his name meant. Elijah's name means Yahweh is God. Remember, a person's name carries with it an identity. Elijah's very identity is anchored in what, or rather, who is his ultimate value. And what at the end of the day is our ultimate value? What is our a main concern in our lives? What matters most to us? Is it material possessions? Is it our jobs? Is it human respect? This, the list can go on for eternity, it seems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And every one of us has our own attachments and our own weaknesses and our own sins. Even if we really want to grow in our relationship with the Lord, we need to be clear about what our ultimate value is. What do we value most in life, in other words? The Lord desires it to be him. We do not know what our lives are like. We do not know what our value truly is unless we've let Christ look at us. Unless we've let the gaze of Christ fall upon us. It is only then that we are truly free. That we know what our value truly is. And do we know how the Lord looks at us? Do you know how the Lord looks at you? We will only be truly happy or free if we give him the place where he belongs in our lives. If we believe truly what he has said about us and not believe the lies that can come up in our lives that are told about us or the lies that we tell ourselves. What does the Lord say to us about ourselves? He says to us that we have intrinsic value, that we are worth dying for. And the Lord says this not merely by words, but he says this by laying down his life. He says this by action. We know what kind of person we are by what is our ultimate value. Again, what we place everything into. Our entire existence. Elijah was all about God. And we can see this by how in the manner in which he lived his life. It is why he challenged the king at the time, King Ahab, because the king had fallen over to the worship of false gods. It is why he challenged the 450 priests of Baal. He challenged them to call down fire to consume their sacrifice. And then he did the same thing when their sacrifice failed. 
he called down fire to consume the sacrifice in the name of the one true and living God. And guess whose sacrifice was taken up and consumed? Not the prophets of Baal. but Elijah's sacrifice. The sacrifice to the one true and living God. Elijah is told on Mount Horeb, the same mountain that Moses received the Ten Commandments, that God would be passing by. And that was the first reading today from the first book of Kings. And after this, a series of loud events happened. A loud clamoring. We heard that the Lord was not in the wind. The Lord was not in the earthquake. The Lord was not in the fire. All of these things, perhaps we think, this is how the Lord's going to come with a whole bunch of loud noise and clamor. But finally, where was the Lord? The Lord was in a a still small voice, a tiny whispering voice. This can perhaps be interpreted in this way. The wind, the earthquake, and the fire stand for all the mighty and impressive goods of this world, the powers of this world that really can lure us in, can't they? All these mighty powers of the world, all these things of the world have their way of just luring us in and attaching our hearts to them and impressing upon us, whether that be, again, possessions, money, lure, fame, prestige, after all of these mighty powers come thundering by, Elijah knew that it wasn't God. Why? Because he was a man who lived up to his name. He was a man who knew what his name meant. God, who was the one true and living God. And he knew who his God was and he knew the ultimate purpose of his life. The Lord God was in the least place of expectation. And that's the same in our lives too. The Lord is in the least place of expectation in that tiny whispering wind. Where do we expect to meet the Lord? Are our lives totally filled up with noise that we cannot hear the Lord? In other words, we need that area, that domain of silence to meet God. The saint whose memorial would have been today is St. Teresa Benedicta, of the cross, otherwise known as Edith Stein. Throughout her life, she attentively sought the truth at all costs. She was an all or nothing type of child and then grew into an all or nothing type of young woman. And from a young age, and this is at her canonization homily, Pope St. John Paul II said this, at the age of 14, she had consciously and deliberately stopped praying. She wanted to rely exclusively on herself and was concerned to assert her freedom in making decisions about her life. At the end of a long journey, she came to the surprising realization. And these are the Pope's words. Only those who commit themselves to the love of Christ can be truly free. Only those who commit themselves to the love of Christ can be truly free. 
The Pope goes on, because she was Jewish, Edith Stein was taken with her sister Rosa with many other Catholics and Jews from the Netherlands to a concentration camp in Auschwitz where she died with them in the gas chambers. The gospel is clear about our trusting in the Lord. The disciples are in the Sea of Galilee being tossed about by waves and wind. They see the Lord Jesus walking within their midst of the stormy water. And Jesus calls out to Peter, come. Trust. Come after me. Walk. Within the stormy wind, Peter stepped out of the water and walked toward Jesus. And Peter began to sink. Why? Because he lost his confidence in God. Because he took his eyes off Jesus. And lost his trust. In a prayer, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross illumines this gospel passage. And these are her words. St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. Who are you, sweet light that fills me and illumines the darkness of my heart? You lead me like a mother's hand. And should you let go of me, I will not know how to take another step goes right in line with today's gospel. Should the Lord let go of us, we should not know or even have the ability to take another step. She says, you are the space that embraces my being and buries it in yourself. Away from you, it sinks into the abyss of nothingness from which you raised it to light. You nearer to me than I, I, than I to myself, more interior than my most interior, and still impalpable and intangible and beyond any name. Holy Spirit, eternal love. And how true this can be for each one of us in all of our lives. The storms that come up in our lives. It's easy for us to lose confidence, to lose hope, to lose our ultimate meaning and focus and value in life. It's easy for us to sink, in other words, <laughs> to feel like we're just sinking in quicksand. And how in the world can I possibly get out? Within the storms and struggles of our lives, it may seem impossible to recognize the Lord and how he can save us, how he can bring us out of those messes that we get ourselves into, how he can possibly stretch out his hand like he did to Peter to save us. And notice what happens when Jesus stretched out his hand to Peter and guided him into the boat. What happens immediately after that? when Peter is back in the boat safely. The wind dies down. The storm dies down in the Sea of Galilee. The storm that was once pushing the boat and rocking the boat calms down to a whisper. And only the Lord can do this in our lives. Only him. I close with some very strong and relevant words from Pope St. John Paul II on the occasion of the canonization of our saint today, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, Edith Stein. And with these words, we must never forget the horrible mistakes of the past. So many people want to erase the mistakes of the past. 
We can never forget the horrible mistakes of the past. We can learn from them and even lament from them and cry over them. And ultimately, like St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, be guided to the truth, who is Christ. These are Pope John Paul II's words, again, very apropos to our times and very poignant. He says, from now on, as we celebrate the memory of this new saint year after year, we must also remember the Shoal, that cruel plan to exterminate a people, a plan which millions of our Jewish brothers and sisters fell victim. May the Lord let his face shine upon them and grant them peace. And these are the words that the Pope says immediately following. For the love of God and man, once again I raise an anguished cry. May such criminal deeds never be repeated against any ethnic group, against any race, in any corner of the world. It is a cry to everyone to all people of goodwill, to all who believe in the just and eternal God, to all who know they are joined to Christ, the word of God made man. The Pope says we must all stand together. Human dignity is at stake. He says there is one human family. The new saint also insisted on this, the Pope says, our love of neighbor is the measure of our love of God. For Christians, and not only for them, no one is a stranger. The love of Christ knows no borders. St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, pray for us in the midst of this terrible storm that is inflicting us.